Eastern Conference champs. Milwaukee did set a single game record, though, with 29 made threes. In fact, every active Bucks player, except Giannis Antetokounmpo, made at least one three in this game. Now, the Heat faced the Bucks again today. Their Twitter account showed a little humor posting this graphic this morning with the caption, taking on the Bucks tonight for the first time this season. Brian, it's like it never happened, right? And, and I did see this morning that Jimmy Butler not expected to play in this game either, Brian. So do you feel like you learned anything from yesterday or even from tonight's game without Jimmy or, or not? It's just another night. Rachel, we, we finally found something that the pandemic cured. It cured the Miami flu. I've never seen a team <laughs> come out in Miami and shoot like this. Uh, if you take away Giannis, the starters, uh, shot 18 of 25 on threes. Now, I will submit that that is arguably one of the greatest shooting performances in the history of the NBA, not just on volume, but on percentage. So this is a, probably the best shooting performance we will see throughout the entire year. So I'm not going to focus on the spread of 47 points or the heat. But what I will point out is this Bucks team is heavily reliant on production from its starting lineup. We have seen that in just these first few games. When the starters play well, they are awesome. Their bench remains suspect. And so what I take away from this is a reinforcing of, boy, the Bucks starters are really, really good. But what happens when they need some of their bench? That's what we're going to watch as the season goes along. Well, I agree with you, Brian. But here's, here's, the, here's the key factor of this. Chris Middleton. Chris Middleton has been playing some outstanding basketball. And last night he was on fire. But I'm going to go back to this. We're seeing all these blowouts. This is why the NBA, this is why the players need fans. This is why fans are so important. Good they point. help guys rally back. They give guys the, this energy. Just imagine, the Miami Heat got blown out at home. If it, was a, if it was a crowd in the stands to help them rally back and go on those 10-0 runs or those 15-2 runs, the game would have got close. But you have to find that energy without fans in the stands. And it is a unique situation, and guys going to have to overcome it. But I expect it's going to be a lot of blowouts this season. Yeah, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. You mentioned the Miami flu, Brian. I think Damian Lillard said the other night when before they played against the Lakers that there wasn't anything he could go out and do in L.A. like he normally would the night before. <laughs> we may see some teams lose this home court advantage <laughs> in ways we didn't expect this season. <laughs> we'll see. All right, guys, coming up, Brad Beal and Russell Westbrook. They played well, but the Wizards dropped to 0-4 last night. What is going on in the nation's capital? You know we're going to talk about that. First, though, it's time for a distant replay from this date, 2001, featuring Tracy McGrady. Hudson runs oh. down. T-Mac. Oh. That That's just mean, T-Mac. <laughs> <laughs> she always loved playing in the garden. Mac. He was must-see TV. Still is. Still is, Perk. Got to buy Got to buy Always a Nick. Always a Nick. Nine points, 16 rebounds, four assists, two blocks, with a 14 of 16 performance at the line to boot. And the Sixers defense buckled down hard, holding Toronto scoreless for nearly four minutes in the final frame to turn the game for good. Now, this wasn't officially the game winner, but it felt like it. A nice Curry three on a pass from Embiid, where Curry was so wide open thanks to a triple team on Joel. The Sixers updated roster construction, working exactly like it's supposed to there. So what does it all mean? Should we be thinking this is finally the year that Embiid has a legit place in the MVP discussion? Should, be we, we, should we be worried about Simmons still being predictable in the half court? Or should we be noting his defensive versatility as a marker of the Sixers being able to eke out more gritty wins like this one? Or should we not draw any conclusions at all? Sure, it, it was only just one game, but in this city, in this season, that means more than it ever has. So, Perk, seeing as how that was just one game last night, they're just a few games in, are you buying the Sixers roster tweak so far? I am buying it. The thing that the Sixers were missing was spacers and guys that could shoot the lights out of the ball. You look at a guy like Danny Green. You look at a guy like Seth Curry, who I think – just get props for shooting the ball, but Rachel, he's a hell of a basketball player. He's an underrated defender. He's an underrated playmaker. And then when you look at the structure of that team, just think about this. Tobias Harris 
was having one of the best seasons of his career with the Clippers under Doc Rivers. And Joel Embiid, I love what Doc Rivers is going to do for Joel and what he's doing for Joel. Is he's holding them accountable, not on the offensive end, but on the defensive end. And it's a ripple effect. So when you can hold, when you can hold Joel accountable, not Ben Simmons is saying, you know what? I could play for Doc. I could go out here and lay it all out on the line. I love the way this team is structured. I think they, they're moving in a great direction. And last year at this time, if they were down at halftime like they were to the Raptors, I don't know if we would have seen this same fight. But since Doc Rivers is there, one thing I know about Doc, his, his halftime speeches are going to be on point. And he's also going to get guys to rally back and play together. And that's what we saw yesterday from the 76ers. You know, from the start, when Daryl Morey and Doc Rivers got together there, they made it very clear that this was going to be a Joel Embiid-focused team. Everything that they've said and done has pointed to that. They haven't gone away from Ben Simmons, but they have really played to Joel. And those roster tweaks that you mentioned, Rachel, were about Joel. And if you watched this game last night, they ran their offense through the end of the game, through Joel Embiid, with high pick and rolls. In their opener, where they had a 10-point comeback victory over Washington in the fourth quarter, they ran that whole fourth quarter offense through Embiid in the post. And, you know, that is really what this is about. This is about giving Joel Embiid what he wants, which is the ball in his hands and control to, uh, you know, to, to be the kind of MVP candidate that he thinks he can be. The other thing is... Doc Rivers is putting no pressure on Ben Simmons on three-pointers. He has not taken a three-pointer yet. Last year, I remember Brett Brown publicly announcing, yes. Ben, we want you to shoot a three every game. Doc has mm. not done that at all, and the roster changes allow him to take that pressure off of Ben. And this approach so far has him three and one, and then the loss was when Embiid sat. Do you feel like there is a point where they can see enough before the trade deadline that this is the group they're going to stick with? I should rephrase that, by the way, because Daryl Morey never sticks with exactly the same group, but stars-wise. <laughs> or do you think that there's a point where they're going to look more seriously at that James Harden trade that we know has been discussed? So the Sixers have the, the, the player that the Rockets, I think, can, you know, that's probably the best deal that they can make right now which is Ben Simmons. It's just a matter of constructing it in a way that satisfies both teams. If they really drilled down, they could probably get a deal done within a day or two. But neither, neither one really are interested in doing that right now. And what the real question to me is, is, is there another team out there? Because we have a bunch of teams sort of packed together in the middle that tries to jump up and make an offer for Harden before Philadelphia comes to a final analysis in its mind. And right now... At 3-1, and one, and Embiid and Simmons playing like this, I would say they're farther away from a hardened trade than they were two weeks ago. Perk, what do you think? If you were Daryl, would you be looking to make that deal, or would you stand put with what you got? I would stay put right now, Rachel. I would, I would watch the first – I would watch at least the first – part of the season up into the trade deadline to see where the team is at. So I would keep an eye and I would monitor the situation. One thing about it is that you could never go wrong with, with, with trading for a guy like James Harden, an MVP guy that's right now that's like 10 to 12 pounds overweight and still averaging about 35 <laughs> points a night. So, But with that being said, I wouldn't mess up up the chemistry right now I'm looking at this watching this Philadelphia 76 team and the chemistry is there mm -hmm. you have great leadership in this locker room between Danny Green and Dwight Howard both guys that have won the championship and knows what it takes so right now the chemistry is there guys look like they love playing with, it, with one another and most importantly they know their roles they know they know their roles so I wouldn't mess with it not right now all right, well, let's move on to another team built around its big man. Last night on national television, the Milwaukee Bucks beat the Miami Heat by 47 points. Now, to be fair, Jimmy Butler didn't.